Hi there, my name is Gregory Scott. Earlier this year, I released a game called Armor Commander, the World War II tank commander roguelike, which you can download and play right now at www.armoredcommander.com. After I finished that game, however, I was thinking about how it could have been improved, and so the past few months, I've been working on a sequel to the game, which I have titled, um, being a creative sort, Armored Commander 2. This video is the first public look at um, actually playing the game. I have posted a couple screenshots on my development blog, but I feel like it's in a good enough place right now that I can actually show off some of the, some of the action in the game and, and some of the game systems. So Armored Commander 2 works on the same central uh, concept. The idea is a roguelike, so you're exploring a map, you're fighting enemies. Um, if you die, your game is over and you have to restart from the beginning. But it also draws a lot from war games, war games such as Advanced Squad Leader um, and Flames of War. So of course, the original rogue didn't have tanks, and most roguelikes work in kind of a uh, in either a fantasy world or a sci-fi world. Um, I don't know of any other that's tried to do something similar where you control a single vehicle or a group of vehicles. But for my purposes, I feel like it works really well. In war, in real war, if you die, that's the end. You don't get to continue on. So uh, for war games, um, it adds a certain uh, a, a level of difficulty and a level of intensity when you know that if your unit is lost, um, you've lost the game and you've lost all of the progress that you've made up to that point. For me as well, being a hobby programmer and by no means a professional programmer, if you've taken a look at my source code, you would be able to see this right away. Um, I make games because it's enjoyable and because it's fun. And um, because I have an, a career that is not making games, I don't necessarily have a lot of time always, uh, especially recently, to devote to this work. So. Um, using a format or using, uh, using a genre where everything is built out of um, ANSI characters and ASCII characters works really well for me because I don't have to spend a lot of time building uh, graphics. I can just use um, very, very simple glyphs to make, um, to make the visual representation of the game. So both for the original Armored Commander and Armored Commander 2, everything that you see is built out of a series of basic um, characters. Some of them, like these, um, like these uh, triangle-shaped characters like you see here, I've added, but most of them are very basic and familiar um, uh, Latin characters and the extended characters as well. For the sequel, um, I've chosen uh, a fairly blocky um, 16 by 16 uh, um, pixel font that is based on the original uh, Commodore 64 font. There is, and I'll show you right now, an option. Um, you can toggle the font size to bring it down to only eight by eight, and this will make a much more compact window, and it's totally up to you how you wanna play. If you wanna play with the lar relatively large window um, and the blocky characters, or a smaller window with smaller characters. Um, in the future, this uh, options menu is going to grow, but at the present, you can see there's some basic options you can change pause time and animation speeds. This whole menu system is something that I've newly programmed um, for this game. It's a generic system. You can fill it with whatever information you like, and um, you can either um, press the keys to go d directly to and select the option. So for example, from here I can hit zero, and I go right back to the main menu, or you can use the arrow keys to select different options in the menu. And as you move around, you see this little display um, uh, extra explanation about what that what that option will do. The sounds you hear for menu selection right now are the only sounds in the game, but of course eventually um, there will be more. It's just something that I have left until a little bit, a little bit later. So, so very briefly before I get started, um, in Armored Commander, in the original Armored Commander, uh, it was based on the, uh, a very similar um, structure, game structure, to an old board game called Patton's Best. Your tank was in the center, enemies moved around you, the map was not um, intended to, to represent um, fixed units, it was very abstract. You have range circles that extend outward from your tank, and um, units exist within certain quadrants areas of these circles, but their precise location is not fixed. This was one of the most uh, frustrating things for me about the, that first game, game about Armored Commander, is that when things move around the map, they can sometimes do so in ways that don't make sense 
and that aren't predictable. Uh, a lot of things in games um, should not be predictable. They should be surprising, but the, the underlying structure of it um, should be should have some kind of rationality to it. Otherwise, the game just seems uh, capricious and unfair. So one of my aims in Armored Commander 2 was from the beginning to make a uh, an orthographic map. Is that the right word? I think so. Orthographic map, a map where it uh, it's to scale and stuff on the map moves around as if it's a flat surface representing a uh, real terrain as opposed to an abstract one where well this quadrant is kind of like between 800 and 1000 meters away and stuff is in there but we don't know exactly where it is so actually the first the first time when i tried i think i got started back in february of this year of 2016 uh, which seems like a long time ago now because uh, a lot has happened in 2016 but when i got started i wanted to make a um just a, a straight grid uh, x and y grid and have every unit on the map being represented by a single character. I got pretty far with that idea, but I very quickly realized that it just doesn't work for a game, especially not one where you are supposed to be imagining yourself in command of a single tank or a single uh, squadron of tanks on the map. It just didn't work, so I threw it out. And I brought back in hexes, and for me, hexes have worked really well in this game. It seems to, it seems to do the job, uh, as you'll see in a moment. So uh, let's get started. Let me show you uh, some aspects of the game. So I, I'll reiterate, this is a proof of concept. It is extremely bare bones, skeletal structure. There is much in this game that is eventually going to be changed, that's going to be expanded. Um, even quite recently, I was working with a system for uh, for spotting units and and for hiding units on the board that I ended up throwing out and ch and changing quite drastically. So this is a game design in flux, but you can see you should be able to get an idea about where it's going. And uh, later this afternoon, after I upload this video, I'll throw all of the code up onto GitHub if anybody wants to download it, uh, as long as you install the right version of Python and of the uh, libt cod um, library and um and pygame you should be able to run it yourself but you can see you can get an idea about what's involved so uh again in the future from this menu you will be able to select either a single scenario just play a one-off game or an entire campaign where you play through different missions across uh during the calendar of world war ii at present you don't have any of th these options you can only start a new scenario so let's do that now and here is the view. So as I said, I ended up using hexes. As with Armored Commander 1, the, you know, the glyph in the very center is intended to represent you. In this case, you are in command of a squadron of tanks made up of five Panzer 35Ts. Uh, at this point, um, uh, when I, in the early development of the game, I'm intending to start with the very earliest weeks of the war in September 1939. So in September of 1939, the Panzer 35T is actually a quite excellent uh, medium tank, probably one of the, one of the best available uh, at the time in terms of its protection and its armament. You have five of these. So this represents you. You um, and your squadron are always uh, always appear in this central hex. The ter as you move around, the terrain move, uh, moves around you and you stay in the middle. So the assumption is always that you are facing up um, I, it's possible to show the, the actual, the turret direction. For now, I haven't, I haven't implemented because it's also possible for more than one unit to occupy the same hex. And because there's actually only three by three plus one on each side spaces within the hex, not counting these, these, uh, border cells here, uh, it starts to get very crowded very fast. So I haven't worked out exactly how to show both units and turret directions and multiple units in the same hex. I suspect what I might end up doing is that um, units will show up always in the middle and then it'll sort of cycle through in an animation if there's more than one unit stacked in the same hex. Um, but anyway, I'll, I'll figure it out in the, in the future. So this is you, this is a hex of terrain. At the moment we're in open terrain, so it's assumed to be fields, um, scrub, anything that's in this terrain that, um, that's there is not serious enough to block line of sight or to give concealment. Every uh, hex of terrain is estimated to be about 160 meters in size. Uh, this is sort of a this is an adaptation of Advanced Squad Leader, where hexes are, again, more or less about uh, 40 meters in width. So each one of these hexes represents about four 
um, hexes squared, or hexed, I guess, in the case of hexes, uh, four square hexes in, um, in the advanced squad leader scale. So because each hex is given um, a size in meters, we can map and we can give distances. So right now we know that our main objective is um, just under three kilometers in this direction. So even though we can't see it, it exists on the map and the entire map of hexes has already been generated. But at any one time, we can only see six hexes away in any direction. Right now, this is the edge of the map. In the future, there'll be some kind of a, of a border here to indicate that it, is, that it is a map edge and it's not just space or darkness or whatever. Um, there will also be indicators along the edge of the map. One of the downsides with doing a display like this is that um, in real tank battles, oftentimes units would engage each other at ranges beyond, you know, six times 160 meters away. What I'm thinking about doing is that if you get to a position where there is an enemy unit off map that you would normally have line of sight to, what will happen is that there'll be a little arrow indicator that pops up on the edge of the map. If you click on it, there'll be a little inset hex here that comes up that shows you um, this unit, which is off map somewhere, and then you'll be able to interact with it as if it were uh, displayed on the main map here. Again, not something that works yet. It's still just a plan, but I think it's I think it's practicable. I think it's doable. Um, right now, I think a lot of the code has this kind of this six hex limit um, coded in, so not a whole lot is going to happen that that is not visible on the map. All right, so that's the map, and as you can imagine, areas like this are pond or water. Um, you can't enter them, but they don't block line of sight or offer concealment. These are woods. They block line of sight past them, and they offer concealment to units that are inside of them. Roads, as you might expect, make it easier to move, uh, make you move faster along the map. And of course, in the, um, oh yes, in fields, don't block movement, but they do offer um, concealment to units that are inside of them. And they don't block line of sight either. And as you can imagine, in the future, there will be lots more types of terrain that will be, uh, that will be added, and the, the, display of the train will be a little bit more varied too. Right now it's just, it's dead simple um, just to try to get this system working. On the, in the left column here, you can see a depiction of your own tank. You get an idea about what your morale uh, is like, what your training is like. So you're a first line um, in terms of the, in terms of the entire army, you're, you're on the first line troops, so fairly well trained. You can see your weapon systems. Here you see turret armor on the front and the side, hull armor on the front and the side. Your vehicle is rated a fast tank, so that um, is related to how many of these time units you need to use to th move through the map. Time units um, regulate how much you can do within a given turn, and a given turn I think is going to be about uh, 10 minutes of, of clock time during the day. So just like if you've ever played the original XCOM back in the day, uh, your units were given time units, which, uh, which you could then spend doing different uh, actions. Under the view of your own tank and your own squadron, you see the action menu. This works just like the main menu. You can scroll through, select, which will bring you to a submenu, and select different actions and options. Um, again, all of these are uh, subject to change in the in the future, but this is kind of the core system that makes it all work. If an action will use up time units, the amount will be shown here. And this amount changes depending on where you are in the map. So for now, at the moment, if we were to move forward here, we'd be going into the woods, which uses 10 time units. It's almost a third of our allowance for the entire turn. Um, of course, if we were moving into an open ground area or along a road, that the expense in time units would be less. Order of battle down here is sort of a list of units in the, that exist in the game. Your own units are shown here in light, in, in light, uh, uh, in white, and you can see their name. The enemy units are shown in gray because you haven't spotted them yet. This order of units is also the order in which they act. So. Right now, we're first to act, then some kind of an enemy platoon that we can't see, then our allied uh, platoon, and then another enemy platoon that we can't see. And after a platoon acts, 
this list is always reordered so that the units with the most time units get to act first and the ones with the least are pushed to the bottom. And if you run out of time units, you get removed from the list and those who have un time units remaining continue to act until they run out. Then a new turn is started and everybody's maximum time units gets replenished. If you are low on time units and you do an action that uses a lot, you actually use up all of your allowance and then have a deficit which is carried on to the next turn. So if you really want to do an action at the end of your turn which uses up a lot of time units, you can, but you'll already be at a penalty um, for the next turn. That's Again, that's the way it works now. It might not be the way it works in the future, but so far it seems to work pretty well. Um, yes, so another thing that's new that didn't exist in the original Armored Commander is that your allied friendly units exist on the map and are shown. They're not abstract dice rolls that just kind of come in from nowhere and attack your enemies. They exist on the map and a big part of, of Armored Commander 2 is going to be managing these units, ordering them around and using them as effectively as possible. So at this early stage for the proof of, proof of concept, your own squadron are five fairly good tanks for the time. And then you have an allied squadron, uh, Light Panzer Spa, which is like a uh, an armored car, basically. And um, they have uh, less armor than you do. And I think, I can't remember what kind of a gun they have. I think they have maybe like a 20 millimeter gun um, on them as well, or an MG or something. But in any case, um, they have the benefit of being recce, short for re reconnaissance, which means that they move faster, they're more stealthy, um, they're harder to hit. They are designed to be your eyes and ears on the battlefield. Final thing I'll mention before uh, we get started and we actually start to play is that the um, the line of sight display on the map, you see how some of the hexes are light and others are dark. The dark hexes are ones that you yourself as commander of this tank squadron cannot, uh, tank squadron cannot see. So you can't see this hex of woods. You can't see all of these hexes of open ground. Your allies, however, can see much more than this. Um, I suspect that this armored car squadron can see pretty much everything past here up until this line. Um, this won't be reflected because this is still intended to kind of simulate you, the player, being in a particular spot and not being able to see all of this. However, if there were an enemy, say in this hex out here or out here, and your ally spotted it, it would ap appear on the map and you would see, it would be revealed if they could see it. So the line of sight reflects you, but your allies also have the ability to, um, to, uh, to extend outward line of sight, lines of sight from wherever they are and see enemy units and attack and do everything else. It simulates it um, just the same as it does you, um, but it only does this kind of this display um, for the benefit of your own, of your own squadron. All right, so let's get uh, going. So our objective is three kilometers away. Um, I, I think there's about two uh, enemy platoons that have been spawned somewhere up the road, up this way. I don't know exactly where they are. I don't know exactly what will happen. Um, the game might crash. It has crashed before, although uh, the other day I actually played through a complete, uh, complete scenario, which was nice. It's always a good milestone in the development of a game when you can just play a full game through, even if it's still very basic. So let's get started. I, uh, I've mapped the familiar WSAD keys to forward reverse and to turning so that if you don't have to do, you know, you don't have to use the arrow keys and select each menu option, you can just keep your left hand on the keyboard for moving around the map. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to rotate my hull because my plan is to get on this road and to take it up here. There's not a lot of cover out here, so it's probably not going to be very helpful. So first action is going to be rotating the hull. And you see that the entire map rotates around me. And my action is going to be moving forward into these trees. The allied platoons know where they are in relation to you. It knows that it is... You know, compared to the map, if we assume that up here is north, it knows that it is in this hex compared to you. And as much as possible, it will try to stay in that position. One thing that we can do, and this, this is not um, a section of the game that is very fleshed out yet. It just has very basic functionality. But we can do it, is we can order allied platoons and we can tell them what their position should be in relation to us. So if we want to order the uh, the allied platoon to take that position, 
we can put it there and then we can hit F to tell them to take a new position. So now they've been ordered. And now I'm gonna do a wait order to stay in place. And I'll do another one because I have a lot. I'll just, I'll burn up my time units just so the other platoon can move because I'm in no hurry. And it moves forward. So it knows that it's supposed to be in this hex. Now, as much as possible from now on, it will try to stay one hex north, north of us um, in that direction. So we'll see. Now, if we go up here onto the road, it's gonna try to move into that pond I'm hoping that my A-star pathfinding is working well enough that it doesn't do that and it waits and it moves around, um, but we'll see. So now that we're on the road, moving one hex forward only uses four time units as opposed to, I think, 10 um, that from moving into the trees. All right, again, I am gonna stay here a few turns and let my armored cars catch up with me. I can't remember, but I suspect that armored cars have a big penalty for moving through trees. Here they come. All right, and he's almost back in position. There he is. All right, so now for some reason we have, spot hit, we have spotted a platoon of Polish tanks that exist somewhere on the board, but we can't see, actually see them on the map for the moment. So let's see what happens. Move up the road. Oh, there they are. So I think in this case, my allied platoon could see them, but I can't at the moment, and there they are. So it's a platoon of two 7TP single turret uh, tanks. Lighter, lighter armor than I have but they still have a gun that's strong enough to blow through my front armor if they, get, if they get a good enough shot. So from this position, I think my best bet is actually to turn to face the enemy tanks. And I'm gonna stay put for a little while to see what happens. After I moved, you can see my status changes up here. And if I were to fire now, I would have a penalty for having moved. After spending a certain number of time units being still, However, you lose that penalty because your tank stops, you're able to take better aim, and you'll have a more effective shot. Finish the turn. Okay, for now the tanks aren't moving, so let's be proactive, and we will go to them. Oh, they spotted me. So, I've been spotted by the enemy units. There it is. Uh, this is just an indication of the line of sight. So their squadron of tanks is firing a 37L gun. Okay, so they actually have as good of a gun as, as we do, firing their gun at my squadron. Base to hit, which is based on the target type, whether if it's infantry or a vehicle, and the range is seven or less. Modifiers uh, for terrain, because it's going through these, um, this field right here, plus one. And the uh, Panzer 35T is a relatively small tank, so there's another plus one. Um, in this game, it's based, it's, it, um, it takes a lot from the original advanced squad leader system. It's a little counterintuitive. Uh, positive modifiers are worse from the point of view of the side that's trying to do the action because they affect the, the die roll. So originally to hit was seven or less. In this case, there's a plus two penalty. So now the, the, the to hit roll actually needs a five or less. And again, in the future, there will be a little am, uh, animated dice rolling uh, display here to show you what the roll actually was. For now, we just see what the what the results were. So he takes a shot at me. Miss and a miss, good so far. So now that we've stopped, I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna fire back because that seems like a good way not to die. Well, I still moved, that's the thing. All right, I'll fire now and, and hope for the best. So shooting a 37 gun. So it's actually a better gun than we have. It's better at long range than our gun. Um, uh, once you select a weapon to fire, um, this will show you which hexes are within line of sight the, and the um, fire arc of this current weapon. There's our target, let's fire away. So we have a plus, four, uh, we have a plus two modifier. We don't have a, our gun is not as good at long range, so, so the base to hit is six or less, so it's actually a four or less to hit, which is not great odds. But we do have five tanks. No hits. Armored car platoon is coming up. There's not a whole lot they can do to help us. But we'll see. Maybe we, I think on his next turn, he'll move up to here and he might be close enough where he can actually take a shot. So for now, 
our main gun is reloading and we won't be able to fire it again until we spend um, 10 uh, time units. In the meantime, what we can do is we can fire our MG. I think his armor is light enough that it might have a chance. So six or less to hit. One hit, final to kill is one or less. Um, all of these rolls are on a 2d6, so obviously it's not going to harm him. You might have noticed, too, that was the wrong animation. In the future, machine gun attacks will use um, a much better looking animation than that. So from this range, at least, we can't affect him with our, main, with our MG, and we're still reloading. I think what we have to do is we have to charge in and just fire from close range. Let's see how that works. Another thing that's not shown yet is his facing, but I assume that he's facing sort of near us, either into this hex or into this hex. All right, so I'm going to stop there. And I'm going to wait. He's firing back at me. One hit. The base to kill for this gun is nine or less. Um, we have fairly good fr front armor, which is a minus three. He needs to roll a, a six or less, which I think is about even odds, so we might lose a tank here. Nope, it pinged off. We're good. Let's fire back. Now that we're at close range and we haven't moved recently, it's just a seven or less, which is much better. One, two, three, nope, three, four hits. First one has no effect. Second one has no effect. Third one has no effect. Come on. Oh, fourth one has no effect. So we can hit, we just can't really do anything. Armored Cars takes a shot with uh, MG and uh, no effect. So, so far, um, the, the tanks, the Polish tanks, are really good at bouncing our shells off of their armor. Let's see. Let's fire the coax MG. Maybe for, at this range we can actually do something. Three hits. Again, one or less. So it's not going to happen. Return fire. No hits. Excellent. We're still reloading, so what I'm going to do, I'm just going to nudge up right next to him. One thing that you notice is that the game does not show the full um, two hit and modifiers for attacks that don't involve you, and I've done that just because otherwise um, it gets really slow. I'm going to wait here. All right, good. New turn. We don't have the movement penalty. We don't have the loading, the um, pivoting penalty. Fully loaded. No, I don't want to move. I want to shoot. Close range. Yeah, four for five. Not bad. No effect. Destroyed one. The platoon is now pinned. And destroyed the other. The whole platoon has been destroyed. Excellent. So running up right next to the uh, enemy platoon, just firing into him worked. Uh, it might not have. I could have very easily lost one or two tanks in that, but in this case, it did work. So let's move on. So we're now hidden because there's no enemy units around to spot us, and we will retain this hidden status uh, until we get close enough to an enemy unit where they can they can see where we are. All right, so there is a possible enemy unit here. I mentioned earlier in the video that before I had a different system for spotting enemy units and for uh, for concealment and for being hidden what it actually did is that unless you could unless you one of your units could see or be was aware of the enemy unit it wasn't drawn on the map at all this got very frustrating it, it's counterintuitive because i mean we sit here at the computer screen we can see the map yes some of them are dark but it can be very frustrating frustrating that we can see a hex and to look at it there's nothing there and yet, so all of a sudden, an, an enemy unit pops out of nowhere and, and attacks us. So what I'm doing instead is any enemy unit, even if you can't see them, that's on the map will be shown by a question mark. However, during the course of the game, there will also be question marks that are dummy units that are false, uh, false alarms or, f or false reports that will also appear. And you won't find out that they're false, that they're dummy units, until you actually try to do an attack on them. Uh, it's as if you get a report of enemy operating somewhere on the map nearby, you move into it and you realize that it was false. Maybe there was somebody there before, but they've left, 
or it was just nerves and um, and and they th they thought something was there that's actually not. So there will be a certain number of those. You'll never quite know if when you see a question mark if it's real or not. And so you always have to be very cautious. Use your recce units, which are better at spotting and better at hiding and not being spotted, to move in and see what's going on there. So in this case, uh, there's a unit up here. I suspect it's a tank, another, another tank squadron. So let's go in and try to deal with that. So in this case, I only have four time units left. To move into the woods would take 10. So what I'll do is I'll go up, I'll lose my four, and then I'll be, I'll have a deficit of six for the next turn. So I'll start the next turn with only 30 time units. So we've now spotted another Polish uh, tank platoon. Return to root. So right now we have the penalty of having moved. We're fully loaded, however, so we don't have to wait for to reload. What I think I'm going to do is I'm going to wait for one action and then fire on the next one. What I do want to do, however, is order the armored car into here. Yes. Wait. Both been spotted. Uh, fired at the armored car, better than me. One hit. Oh, I lost an armored car and the platoon is pinned. Okay, so two left. Now, however, we don't have the movement penalty. Time to open fire. Three hits, not bad. No effect. Destroyed one and pinned the platoon. Destroyed the other. Excellent. And it crashed. Okay, that's all right. As for, uh, I think that was the last platoon, and you can imagine that afterwards I would have gone on and captured the objective, which existed somewhere up there. Okay, so the crash has to do with um, I'm changing around. I'm changing around the status flags, and it was looking for a status flag that no longer exists. But that's okay. That's the whole point of having proof of concept early builds is to is to shake out bugs like that. So again, I hope you enjoyed this early look at Armored Commander Two. Um, remember, the original Armored Commander is available for download completely free of charge at www.armoredcommander.com. I will upload the source code to Armored Commander. Dot, uh, sorry, Ar Armored Commander Two to GitHub very shortly, and I hope to have an early playable build um, in due time. If you have any ideas or comments, please feel free to uh, email me. I think it's uh, Armored Commander at uh, gmail.com. The email address is also on the website. Anyway, so again, uh, thanks for w watching, and um, I hope you're looking forward to what I'm able to do with uh, Armored Commander 2. Thanks very much.